Hello brothers and sisters. Each time we open the Bible we get a little bit more familiarized with how to search through it and what to look for and to actually see what's being stated. So if you'll open with me right now to Genesis chapter 3, I would like to talk about what the world calls the fall. Now if you think about it, it's not really like, it's not like he was climbing one day up in a, well, he, he got some food from a tree, but he wasn't climbing a tree, and, you know, he didn't fall. See, when whenever we're reading the scripture, we're thinking of the demonstrated things of scripture in our reality. We're looking for the things that, from the scriptures, are being demonstrated in our reality, and... Every day I see Genesis chapter 3. Every day. Because Nakash, which is the Hebrew word for the serpent, is, is always trying to rule over us. And when we think of the beast, we think of the world ruling system. So we see the beast mentioned here. And beast sometimes in scripture is spoken of as as men so are the Gentiles specifically so and Gentile means heathen and that's why in Mark 10 verses 42 through 45 we'll go there in a moment and in here in Genesis chapter 3 we're seeing this point of acting like a heathen and being lawless rather than obeying God who writes with his laws upon our heart. The difference between God working through us and us having to rely on man-made regulations or letters written in, in on paper by men, you know, are, are even needing the stones, right? The two tables of stone rather than having those laws established on our heart. So I wanted to be careful how I worded that there. I didn't want to be irreverent sounding, so we we're, we praise God that he did these things so we can see, right? So, the serpent, Nakash, I want you to turn with me to see that exact same word in 1 Samuel chapter 12. In 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 12, actually, he says, and when you saw that Nahash, but it's Nahash, it's the same exact word in the Hebrew, the king of the children of Ammon came against you, you said unto me, Nay, but a king shall reign over us, when Yahweh your God was your king. And now, so 1 Samuel chapter 12, that was verse 12, now let's look at verse 17. Samuel is speaking, just as he was the one speaking right there in verse 12, now Samuel is going to speak to them again in verse 17. He says, Is it not wheat harvest today? I will call unto Yahweh, and he shall send thunder and rain, that ye may perceive and see that your wickedness is great, which ye have done in the sight of Yahweh in asking you a king. So up here they say, A king shall reign over us. And in 17, it says that it was wicked. Yahweh's your king. Just like if you open with me to Hosea. Hosea chapter 13. In Hosea chapter 13, in verse 9, it says, O Israel, so Hosea chapter 13, verse 9, O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thine help. I will be thy king. He's going to be the judge. He's Elohim. He's the Most High God. Elohim, Pluralis Majestatus. He speaks on behalf of those who are His and those who are not. And He judges them both. Just like we find in Psalm chapter 82. So, um, as we tear through here, let's go ahead and, and look at Matthew... Matthew chapter 10, verses 40, or I'm sorry, Mark, 
Mark chapter 10, verses 42 through 45. So we're going to go to Mark 10. In, in Mark chapter 10, verse 42, it says, But Jesus called them to him, and saith unto them, You know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority upon them? The Gentiles. And we're going to flip to 1 Samuel chapter 8 in a moment, and I'm going to show you that exact same word when they ask for a king like the Gentiles. Nakash, the serpent. <laughs> The sun and the stars revolve around you, O king, they would say to their man-king. We would be without order and knowledge if it weren't for you. And and um, we don't do that to man, but we do that to God because we know God ordered the stars and ordered the system and made this creation. But... These people do not know in these denominations that the world calls church. Again, there were 15 instructions given to the boards of Oxford and Cambridge by the king. That was the 15 rules over the translation. The third edict was, you will retain the old ecclesiastical terms, but they're not ecclesiastical. It's the changing of the language. Isn't, wow, praise God. Isn't that what happened in Genesis chapter 11 when men built up their own systems? They said, let us make us a name, their own authority. And, and a definition is when you look at what something signifies. And a definition is a name because a name is a character, an etching. That's, that's when the scripture says the express image of, of his person. I, I can't remember exactly how he says it there, but the, the word express image means an exact copy, character. It's, that's the exact Greek word, character. It might be pronounced a little different, like um, character or something along those lines. But character in the Greek comes from the word Carasso, and, and, and it's the, the idea of the mark out or an etching, and that's what the mark of the beast is, and the, the karagma. And, and this is the same idea portrayed when we see a law etched out by, by men according to their traditions and habits. We're not to be etched out after them, but we have the tradition of the apostles and the prophets and the the chimera, which and and I, I heard that analogy in signature in the cell. It's the it it's the 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 way that information is transferred from one source to another. The apostles and the pro are sorry. The apostles and the prophets are have left this world, but there has been a transference. A sort of strange chimera, he explains in there, of getting their information to us. Even though there's been changes and even though there's been some really bad translations made, God preserved his word, just like he said he would. And those who inquire or read into day-to-day -day life or go out into the world... And, and share the gospel, which is this message, the message from God. It's God's message. 1 Samuel 9.9, 9, the prophets in old time were called seers. And so he's given us new eyes to see, and he's given us new ears to hear. And the ear trieth words like the mouth trieth meat. So we learn what to accept and we learn what to reject. But it comes from God. There's a, there is a, I have a Bible in my hand. Open to Job 32. Job 32. Sorry, I'm, I 
get the thumbing away and I don't know why I do that. So Job 32. And verse 8. Job 32 verse 8. And this is uh, this is Elihu speaking. And he's, he's a, a young man. He says that in verse... In, in verse, so, sorry, one second. In verse six, or we'll start in verse five. So we'll just start from Job chapter thirty-two, verse five. When Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, the three friends everybody knows about, then his wrath was kindled, and Elihu, the son of Barakel the Buzai answered and said, I am young, and ye are very old. Wherefore I was afraid, and durst not show my knowledge. I didn't speak my knowledge. That word opinion actually means knowledge, if you look it up. Elihu's not out there saying, well, I think we should do this. No, he's, he's, he's a godly man sharing the word of God. So he says, I said, they should speak. A collection of days, right? Many days. And a multitude of years. A large number of years. Like a, an old man with a, the hoary head, right? The hoary hairs. Hoary means gray. The gray hair and the gray beard. The gray goatee, you know? <laughs> that you see people have when they're old. They're showing their age. So it says, multitude of years should teach wisdom. But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. So, great men are not always wise, neither do the aged understand judgment. Therefore I said, hearken to me, I will sh show my knowledge. Behold, I waited for your words. I waited. Patience, right? I gave ear to your reasons. I considered what you were saying. And I let, I chewed on them, right? The ear trieth the words like the mouth trieth meat. Whilst ye searched out what to say. Yea, I attended unto you. I was gave an audience. And behold, there was none of you that convinced Job or that answered his words. Lest ye should say, we have found out wisdom. You say, I came up with this wisdom on my own. God trusteth, or sorry, God thrusteth him down, not man. God threw down Job, not man. Now he hath not directed his words against me. Neither will I answer with your speeches. So Job didn't direct his words against him. And, and he says, neither will I answer him with your speeches. I'm not going to talk like y'all. I'm not going to say the same things y'all are saying. They were amazed. They answered no more. They left off speaking. Is that what happens when you speak the words of God? Is that what happened with the audiences who heard Jesus speak? This man is an old example of a man who is Christ-like, anointed. I said, I will answer also my part. I will show my knowledge. I, I believe that's the third time it said that. So, For I am full of matter. The spirit within me constraineth me. So, we see what he's saying there. It's like, it, it calls to mind for me the ideas that the, the Stoics had about the the Numa and the Logos and how orders were being that had coming come into being here in this world and, and they attributed it to the Logos or the the orders or that that the same way we use language, the same things we see in nature, the same things we see in the cosmos. Now the cosmos, Numa and Pur have the idea of the orders and the the way that those orders penetrate the the matter of this world which is very interesting when you get into the DNA and you get into the protons, neutrons and electrons and the the, the things that 
were put into place in Genesis chapter 1 by God. And, and we see that concept of the heavens coming to earth when order is given to chaos. So the darkness and the light, the, it's, it's like that age-old cliche about darkness and, and light. I mean, it's, it's become an age-old cliche because light, light is what supplies order. Like, you know, and, and this is a bit of a silly demonstration, but I, I would like to show you. So you see everything right now and look how clear it is. Like from, from here, you can see what I'm holding and everything. But if you flip off the light, it takes away a lot of that order. So it's not the same order. Now there is a light coming through the window still. So there still is a great deal of order here. But again, it's because of the light coming through the window. So actually because it's so bright, I'll just go ahead and use that light. So we see that the the organ or the there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Now go with me to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. We're just, we're just making a point here about this. So in, in Romans chapter 8, he says that the spirit beareth witness with our spirit that we be the children of God. So I'm, I'm actually looking for that. In verse 16, Romans chapter 8, verse 16, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, inheritance, sons, sons of God. That's what he's talking about right here, children of God, an inheritor. Isn't that why when people, someone dies, they go to get the inheritance? Jesus, suffer me to bury my father first. You, you come with me and let the dead bury the dead. You're going to go there with your family and get into a big inheritance battle, right? And, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God. But we have one inheritance as believers. We have one inheritance as the, the members of, and body of Christ, the, the ecclesia who are called out in, in troops around the tabernacle. And, and I'm speaking spiritually. I'm not saying that we observe times or that we actually believe in um, like geo. Uh, I can't remember the word. It's like geo. There's a lot of words for that when people believe that specific places are holy or that God is in those places. Like the the way that people view their churches and church is a a pagan word that was borrowed by Christian missionaries, or at least it's believed. No one knows the exact etymology of the word church, but they know it's related to, to circus and Circe. Circus and Circe. And Clement, he even acknowledged that when people are claim that they're Christians and they start acting like the world, they... Are like, sorry, there's a loud, there's a loud vehicle passing. Clement said that they are like they're transformed into the beast of Circe. So, and we see that same concept. Whenever you drink of her cup, you would be transformed into a swine or a an animal who would guard her little location on the Isle of 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 Aya, the Isle of Aya. And, and anyways, her and media, church and media, come on. Like, how could that be a coincidence of words? Were the two most powerful pharmacia, pharmacia, they were the witchcraft. In, in Genesis chapter 5, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, in Galatians chapter 5, when it's speaking of the fruit of the Spirit and it's speaking of the, the corrupt works, some people have called it the corrupt fruit that's brought forth because Jesus said you'll know them by their fruit. So the, the corruption there, pharmakia, isn't that what people like to share? They like to share things they've heard, opinions, not, 
not knowledge, not things that they've really gathered and researched in, but what's popular, the facade. And you never learn anything that way. You never, just like in school, you didn't learn anything when you were socializing, which is what they wanted the people who weren't going to be A students to do because they, they're expecting, you know, their little bell curves, they have everything plotted out. They want people to follow what is popular. That's why you put people with their peers, not in real life when there's mixed ages. There's mixed ages when you go to Walmart or when you go to your neighbor's house or even when people were, were celebrating Christmas or celebrating Easter. Didn't you see those things when you were there? Of course, it's a popularity contest. Whoever's the most popular kid gets the inheritance. So, and women usually become, I, I would say, usually women become more aware of these things early on because of the way that they communicate. So, I'm not saying every case, but I, I mean, I never even thought of those things till so I got married and I um, was more in tune with my wife and everything and began to realize things about my children that I'm still beginning to realize about how important inheritance is to people but how few people from poor or needy or you know families even know anything about inheritance so this is another reason the rich men take advantage of the poor and exercise authority upon them so open with me with that being said to Mark chapter 10 Mark chapter 10, verse 42. It says, But Jesus called them to him and saith unto them, Ye know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise, sorry, exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority upon them. But so shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your servant. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be slave of all. Servant, slave, um, a, a person who rows boats, or a person who serves, a waiter of tables, right? For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, not to be served. Yahweh incarnate, Emmanuel. But to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. And they were fighting for position. If you read right before that, they are fighting for position. And that's what happened with Korah when he came against Moses. The gainsaying of Korah. 1 Samuel chapter 8. And Korah is spelled C-O-R-E in Jude. But that's the same person it's talking about. When you go to Numbers and you see Korah. K-O-R-A-H. I believe it was Numbers, but I, I can't. It's been a little while since I've studied that, so... Um, 1 Samuel chapter 8. 1 Samuel chapter 8. It says that then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together. Their tradition of the elders. The traditions of the elders. Your own law, your own judge. And came to Samuel unto Ramah and said unto him, Behold, Thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. The Gentiles. Look that word nations up right there. Look where it's mentioned in 1 Samuel chapter 8, and it means Gentiles. In Mark chapter 10, verse 42 through 45, Jesus said, not like the Gentiles. Peter said that too in 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter five. If you go with me to First Peter chapter five, he says, "The elders, who's he talking to? Who are they talking to in First Samuel? The elders, the elders which are among you, I exhort you. The elders which are among you, I exhort. Who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ." And that's how we know the glory of God rests upon us. And also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. 
Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, not for money, what is lucrative. I'd like to make you a lucrative offer, but of a ready mind. Neither as being lords over God's heritage. The same word used in Matthew, or sorry, the same word used in Mark chapter 10, verse 42 through 45. But being examples to the flock. Lording over someone is doing what the Nephilim do. What the people who consider themselves Elohim upon this earth do. Just like um, Psalm chapter 82 is talking about. And it says that I have said you are gods. But you shall fall like men or die like one of the princes, right? So... Man, I would I would hate to be in that position. I, I thank God for the day of small things. Praise God, who hath despised the day of small things, because we would not want to be in those positions with the rich and taking people's money. And we should thank God every day that God has made people who are there to protect the um. The ones who don't fight. My dog's actually here saying hello. So, yeah. Dogs. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table, right? <laughs> My wife dropped a piece of bread the other day and said it's like the bread from heaven, right? Because the dog didn't know where it came from. And, you know, sometimes we get to acting like dogs and, and beasts, right? So, we have to learn not to want to be kings over people or exercise authority upon them. So, I mean, it's just... We have a lot of learning to do, and we don't want to act like the ravenous wolves and the devouring lions, which were the, the kings and the nobles, and, and to want to exercise authority over each other, but we want to live at peace with one another, and we want to, we want to be of the same mind and, and speak the same words together, not, not exercising a lordy, <laughs> lordship over or authority over so. I hope that this helps, and I appreciate you taking the time to watch. I'm about to go get a cup of coffee, so...